champ, I just want to take a quick second to congratulate you on your NXT Women's title. I know you've overcome a lot of obstacles to get to this point in your career. But I just have to ask you, I mean, the NXT Universe wants to know, why did you call out Shayna Baszler? Because Shayna is nothing more than a bully. She thinks that she can come into our division, take shortcuts, jump people from behind, try to injure Dakota Kai. What are you, overcompensating for something? You realize you just couldn't cut it in the NXT Women's Division? Please, do tell Shayna. I mean, that, that smirk on your face really says a lot, Shayna. I mean, but the champ has a valid point. A, a number of superstars here have felt the effects of the cure food. I mean, from, from Aaliyah to Kairi Sane to Dakota Kai. I mean, even that last match you had with Dakota Kai, uh, apparently you were trying to hurt her. You were trying to break her arm. It's never been about Dakota or Aaliyah or even Kyrie. So you have to stir up waters to catch fish. And Ember Moon is the big fish in this pond. So you think I didn't know what you were doing, Shayna? I am the big fish for a reason. You think that you're gonna come into my NXT Women's Division and take shortcuts where everyone else rises to the challenge. We live by a code, Shayna, of a sportsmanship, skill, honor, heart. See, being NXT Women's Champion means that you have responsibilities. Not only to yourself, but to your division. And if, if you ever become NXT Women's Champion, and set aside all of your selfishness, Shayna. You might get a small glimpse of what that means. But I promise you now, it will not happen at TakeOver Philadelphia. I want you guys to understand something. When I complain about what we see with the women on the main roster, it's all for good reason. Now, that wasn't even the entire sit-down between Shayna Baszler and Ember Moon. I want you guys to understand why I complain. It's because WWE doesn't care about the women on the main roster. They don't. They don't. Have we ever, have we ever seen a sit-down segment like that? between anybody on that women's roster, on both Raw and SmackDown? No. The answer is no. Has there ever been intensity like that that hasn't been forced or hasn't been shoved down your throat? The answer is no. I've been very vocal already about strapping the rocket pack to Shayna Baszler already and giving her an NXT Women's Championship match right out of the gate when she has only had one legit match in NXT. And I'm not even counting the Mae Young Classic. I've been very vocal about just putting her in that position and I've gone over every possible scenario as to why WWE is giving her this opportunity. Some of you are saying Kyrie Sane is injured. It may be. I haven't really heard anything. WWE hasn't really done its best to line up a credible challenger outside of Shayna Baszler for Ember Moon for this takeover. Nikki Cross, we've seen it. Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, we've seen it. Bianca Belair, who I love, is not ready yet. Lacey Evans, nowhere near ready. Aaliyah, not even in the conversation. There really is nobody else. So when you think about it, on one hand, it does kind of make sense, but on the other hand, it does not. But what did WWE do, even, even though most of us were wondering why Shayna Baszler was getting this shot so quickly? They turned it around and made a great segment to get you excited about a match that last week we were all scratching our heads over. You guys have to sit down and watch NXT to get the full, the full ambiance, the full emotion of that sit down. Shayna Baszler, if you watch her closely, 
plays her role perfectly. Sitting down, she's just got this body language that she does not give a shit about Ember Moon. She's got the leather jacket on. She's smirking because she knows what she did. She's smirking at Ember Moon because she doesn't respect her. She's smirking because she knows she's going to beat Ember Moon. And Ember Moon, who I have pretty much loved up until this point outside of her promo ability, is finally challenging herself to bring out what I knew was there. You know, she was very overly scripted. She really wasn't given the floor to just be intense. Now she's staring face-to-face with someone who is intense. And now that angry Ember Moon is coming out. Now she's just channeling what I wanted to see all these months, finally. And Shayna Baszler is, is that perfect, that, that perfect, you know, challenger to bring all of that out of Ember Moon. This sit-down was was great, and I didn't expect much of it when I heard that there was going to be a sit-down. Shayna Baszler played her role beautifully. Ember Moon did a great job. The body language and just the I-don't-give-a-fuck attitude of Shayna Baszler made the entire thing, you know? And she even said when, when Ember Moon wakes up, she's going to realize that She's walking away with the NXT Women's Championship and all of her dreams will have, be sh- will have been shattered. Th- this was an absolutely fantastic sit-down interview. And I-, and I wonder to myself why WWE doesn't treat the women on the main roster with such ferocity, with such intensity. It's like everything on the main roster is treated as just a throwaway joke. But in NXT, the women... Compared to everything, everything else on the show, the women on NXT, whether it's a sit-down segment like this or something in the ring, they're treated as equal. And, and that's the biggest difference from NXT and the main roster when it comes to the women. You know, everybody's all on this hype train and everybody's all on this, oh, we're doing firsts and this is a revolution and, you know, the women's division is stronger than ever. No, it's not. The women's division hasn't evolved at all. It's just new names in a different era. It's the same shit. You don't need first-time Evers to make a revolution. You don't need first-time Evers to evolve the women's division. You don't need to tout that women need equality to be equal to the men. You don't need to force any of that to showcase what you want to do with the women. All you have to do is just do. You don't need cheesy announcements. You don't need forced yes chants. You don't need to sacrifice storylines and characters one week where everybody hates each other, the next week everybody's raising each other's hands and hugging each other because it's the first time ever. You don't need none of that. All you have to do is just do. That's the difference between NXT and the main roster. This was as good, if not better, than anything the men have done with a sit-down interview. When was the last sit-down interview we've seen? Drew McIntyre, right? This was fantastic. And it makes me want to see this match where last week I was questioning why this match was happening. Doesn't take long for NXT to rectify their mistakes, but we're going to talk about TakeOver this weekend when we talk about Off the Script. I'm going to give you my full preview and predictions on TakeOver and what I think is going to happen, what I feel about everything this weekend, so you guys can look forward to that. Other than that, I watched this NXT with eyes wide open, and I am sitting here with my opinion still the same it was four weeks ago. There is no possible way that WWE can overlook Johnny Gargano and not give this man the the NXT championship. There's no way. There, There is absolutely... No way. And there's one thing that stuck out that Mauro Ronaldo stated on this show after Gargano beat Velveteen Dream in a fantastic match. And my God, is Velveteen Dream so fucking good, man. He is so good at what he does. We all know Johnny Gargano is, is great at what he does, but Velveteen Dream, man, you, 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 gotta, you gotta watch this guy to understand how good he really is. Not only uh, as far as him playing his character, but 
He, he's so great to keep up with everybody he's in the ring with, whether it's Aleister Black, whether it's Johnny Gargano, whether it's you know going to be Cassius Ono, which we'll talk about in a second. But everything about Johnny Gargano just reeks NXT Championship. And Mauro Ronaldo, after Gargano beat Velveteen Dream and Andrade Cien Almas came out and did the little sneak attack, Almas is 2-0 versus Johnny Gargano. And that really stuck out to me. I, I just don't think, and this is not even a, a determining factor in what I think is going to happen. I think Johnny Gargano is, is the winner, is the right winner here on Saturday night. Triple H even stated in, in a conference call yesterday that Johnny Gargano is the most over-pure babyface in this industry. And you're not going to say that about anybody unless you have big plans for him going into 2018. There's no way that you cannot give this guy the NXT Championship. And that one line that Moro Ronaldo said that he's 0-2 versus Almas, I doubt WWE is going to have Gargano go 0-3 without getting one win at least over Andrade Cien Almas in singles competition. I'm not even talking about a Tommaso Ciampa. We don't know anything about a Tommaso Ciampa. We don't know if he's ready. We don't know if he's still in rehabilitation. We don't know if he's going to be in Philadelphia. I'm not even concerned about that. The concept of Gargano and Ciampa is there and it excites us all. Yes, I'm talking about what is going on with Gargano now. And what you need to do with Gargano now is give him that championship. Because that is the right man for the position. J.D., Almas hasn't had a clear run or, or, or a run with the title. So what? So what? We know how good Almas is. We know how good Almas can be. But what would have been the plan if WWE didn't go with Johnny Gargano? It probably would have been Almas versus Aleister Black at TakeOver Philadelphia. That's would have been that's what would have been the plan for Philadelphia if Johnny Gargano wasn't inserted in that. WWE's plans clearly changed when they took that title off of Drew McIntyre. Uh, you know, people are saying that Almas was always supposed to win that match. You know, you can go 50-50 on that. I I, I want to not believe that. I, I think with Drew McIntyre losing that match and getting injured, their entire plan changed. Everything changed with Drew McIntyre's injury at that last takeover. If Almas was supposed to win the title, it was probably going to be Aleister Black in that role, and Aleister Black winning the championship. But now Johnny Gargano is in that role, and they and they fast-tracked Black versus Cole for takeover. And I honestly think that Gargano right now is the benefactor of everything that happened with that. Black got moved down. Adam Cole got moved down. Gargano got bumped up. Because WWE knows that the greater story here is Gargano. There's no better story than a babyface like Gargano, who reminds everybody of Daniel Bryan, fighting his way to the top after what happened in Chicago back in May. There's no greater story that could have been told. It took us months and months and months of Gargano losing and finding his heart again. And there's no, there's no final chapter better than him winning that championship. I'm sorry. You know? Everybody's calling for Ciampa to fuck him over. Everybody's calling for Ciampa to ruin his dreams. Ciampa already ruined his dreams. Why don't we let Johnny Gargano live his dream and then Ciampa come and try and steal that away? Why don't we let Gargano resurrect himself after the heartbreak that he suffered in Chicago and have that championship only for Ciampa to see that He's doing well without him, and that's going to entice him and anger him even more. That's what we need to see. That's the greater story here. Alistair Black doesn't need an NXT championship. Alistair Black doesn't need any championship at all. Alistair Black's the face of this brand, and he's going to be the face of this brand, whether he's a champion or not, whether he loses on Saturday or not. He's going to be the face of that brand. Aleister Black is, is ready for the main roster. You can throw him in the Royal Rumble. You can have him win the Royal Rumble and challenge AJ Styles for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. He's ready for the big stage. You don't need him to do anything in NXT. So, having Almas win and then having Almas and Black at WrestleMania it is not really that exciting to me. Because we all know Aleister Black doesn't need it. 
And by that time, Alistair Black will have suffered a loss at the hands of Adam Cole already. Because Adam Cole is going to beat Alistair Black on Saturday night. You guys got to think a little bit. I am very serious about this. I'm ready to shed a tear already if Gargano wins the title. And, and I mean that wholeheartedly. When Daniel Bryan won the World Championship at WrestleMania 30, I legit shed a tear because I was so proud to see him overcome everything and someone in his position to be at the top of the mountain. I already got the tissues ready for Gargano on Saturday night. If I don't see Gargano holding that championship up on Saturday night, I'm going to be very disappointed in WWE. Very disappointed. This was a great show for NXT. Um, that Aleister Black... Oh, not Aleister Black. That uh, Velveteen Dream versus Johnny Gargano match was fantastic. Uh, I love both guys. We'll go over all that. My girl Bianca Belair was on the show last night. No Way Jose makes his return. We got AOP de destroying two poor souls who uh, were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Authors of Pain actually took the microphone and cut their very first promo live in front of NXT. So we'll talk about all that on today's review. Thank you guys so much for everything. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. We are dangerously close to 80, uh, 87,000 subscribers, I think we're going to be, or 88. One of them. I don't even know, man. But I'm loving the, the growth so far, heading towards the Royal Rumble. Good stuff. Happy to see it. Make sure you guys turn on that bell so notifications are delivered to your mobile device of your choice. And thank you guys so much for supporting Harry's, harrys.com slash script. They are sponsoring the podcast all January long. If you guys want the best shave of your life, harrys.com slash script. You sign up, you're going to get a free shave kit on the house. That includes a razor handle, razor blade, a razor blade protective case, and shave gel. All you guys got to do is pay the shipping and handling, which is like 2 or $3. They do ship internationally. You guys can take advantage of that just for listening to the show. Harrys.com slash script. And I guarantee you guys, if you use that, as soon as you get it, you're not going to use anything else for your shaving needs. Also, Audible is still sponsoring the podcast. If you guys want one month free of Audible service, you guys can sign up at audibletrial.com slash off the script. You guys are going to sign up, go through the sign up process. You're going to have one month to navigate Audible service, and they're going to give you one free audiobook of your choice. And if you guys don't like Audible, if you feel like it's not for you, you guys can cancel any time within those 30 days, and you get to keep your audiobook on the house just for signing up and trying the service. Audible trial dot com slash off the script. NXT last night opened up with the Velveteen Dream, who is fantastic at what he does, man. I'm just envisioning him on the main roster right now. I'm envisioning him on SmackDown Live. But uh, at this point in time, I want nobody from NXT right now to be called up to the main roster because the main roster shit right now is absolutely at the bottom of the barrel. These guys will get devoured and ruined on the main roster. But Velveteen Dream backstage, he's got the lights, he's got the ambiance, he's got that purple lighting. He says, Gargano's dreams of becoming the NXT champion will be destroyed, and he doesn't doubt Gargano can do it. But not now. When there's a choice of Gargano or Dream, Gargano's dream will be over. We started the show with No Way Jose versus Cesar Benoni. Very sloppy match. I don't think anybody really uh, cared about seeing No Way Jose back. It was a very underwhelming return back to NXT after several months of being out with injury. No Way Jose is not going to factor into anything. I know Moro Ronaldo mentioned that he's going to try and fight his way back up to the top of the card and get into NXT title contention. I doubt no Way Jose is going to be a contender for the NXT Championship. I'd put Fabian Eichner above No Way Jose. I'd put Lars Sullivan above No Way Jose. Actually, I'd put Roderick Strong above No Way Jose. I don't think No Way Jose is even going to come close to that accolade this year. And, and I know we've talked about it. I know it's been rumored. Nothing has really been said. NXT with a mid-card championship, that would fit perfectly on someone like No Way Jose. I just don't see anything much from No Way Jose uh, in NXT, I think he's one of those novelty acts like Adam Rose was that really isn't going to go anywhere. Not really all that impressed with what he does in the ring. Even when he was away, I didn't really miss him being off television. But I think a mid-card title would benefit someone like No Way Jose if that does come to be uh, something that we see on NXT television. He gets the win here with the uh, wind-up or that wind-up pitch, that big right hand that he does. Don't really like that finishing move at all for No Way Jose. I think he needs something better, a little bit more impactful. 
But uh, he hits Benoni with that for the KO and the pin, one, two, three. Very sloppy match here, man. Jose, uh, you know, no, no way Jose, not really all that great in the ring. He did a swinging neck breaker on, I believe, I believe he hit a swinging neck breaker on Benoni, and it was very sloppy. And at that point I was watching, I'm like, man, this is very sloppy. But that goes to show you that Benoni is, uh, is still very green in the ring as well, even though he throws a great dropkick. Uh, but Benoni here goes down with the loss. He gets nailed with the right hand. One, two, three. No way, Jose. Picks up the win over Cesar Benoni. Luscious Latasha. I know I've seen her somewhere before. I can't put my finger on it. I know I've seen her in person. Um, they called her Latoya here. She went up against my girl, Bianca Belair. This is going to be something I'm going to keep a keen eye on in 2018, man. Bianca Belair has the makings of an NXT champion, women's champion. She's going to be the breakout star in that women's division, bar none. You need to give this woman center stage in that women's division. You need to push her like you pushed Nikki Cross and Ember Moon and you're pushing Shayna Baszler. Bianca Belair, by the summertime, is going to be challenging for the NXT Women's Championship. Mark my words. She is great at what she does. She's got a great look. Her cockiness, her athleticism, just her strength. Just her, her, her showcase of strength is just great to see, man. LaToya was trying to mount the comeback here. Uh, she hits an Inzaguri after dodging a charge from Bianca Belair in the corner. Um, on the opposite end, Belair braided her. She takes her braid, obviously, and it always entices a crowd reaction. Loud snap all throughout the arena. Belair hits her right in the chest with that braided hair. Belair gets Latoya up in a powerbomb position and does that reverse powerbomb. I don't know what it is with some of these NXT wrestlers with their finishing moves, man. I think I think Bianca Belair needs a better finishing move than that. I don't think it's as impactful as it should be, you know? Same thing with Lars Sullivan. I think Lars Sullivan needs a, a better finishing move than, than the freak accident. So we got to work on these finishing moves, man. Bianca Belair, Belair with that reverse powerbomb, uh, face first on LaToya for the win here. She picks up the victory on NXT television. Uh, Percy Watson interviewed Ember Moon like we heard in the opening. Shayna Baszler as well with the sit-down interview. Fantastic stuff. You guys got to go back and watch that. Uh, it's four or five minutes on the actual show. Shayna Baszler played her role beautifully. Ember Moon finally stood out in a promo alongside someone who can entice that intensity and bring that intensity out of Ember Moon. Fantastic stuff. You guys got to go back and watch the mannerisms, the facial expressions of Shayna Baszler. She played it perfectly. I'm Now, I'm looking forward to the match on Saturday night, and we'll talk about that this weekend on Off the Script. More to the story of TM61. They're making their return to the ring next week. I'm liking that they're showcasing TM61, and they're letting the fans inside their world because before they got injured, nobody really knew anything about them. They were very bland. They were very vanilla. Now we know their backstory, where they came from. Now we can make an emotional attachment to TM61, and I think they're going to be a very, very nice asset to the tag team division in NXT because believe it or not, Sanity's not going to be there too much longer. AOP is not going to be there too much longer. With War Machine coming on in, TM61 coming on in, with the Undisputed already there, with... You got um, Sabatelli and Moss. You got the Street Profits. Things are looking pretty good for the NXT Tag Team Division where they don't need Sanity and AOP any longer. Authors of Pain defeated uh, two no-name guys. Bell didn't even ring. Super Collider. They did dual Death Valley drivers in the corner. And they took the microphone and they were speaking, uh, I don't know what language they were speaking, but they uh, said that this will be this will be the fate of the Undisputed on Saturday night. No Paul Ellering at all. He let his guys take the microphone and say what they needed to say as they were destroying these two poor souls on NXT. Johnny Gargano versus the Velveteen Dream. Number one contenders match here. Winner goes on to fight Andrade Cien Almas at TakeOver Philadelphia. If there was any doubt in your mind that Johnny Gargano was going to lose this match, put that to rest. Johnny Gargano beats the Velveteen Dream in a great match. Gargano comes out. Velveteen Dream comes out. He's wearing a cutoff Johnny Wrestling t-shirt. Mind games already. Gargano's laughing and smirking at Velveteen Dream for wearing his merchandise. Dueling chants of Velveteen Dream and Johnny Wrestling. 
If the crowd is not invested in a character, they will show it. If the crowd is invested in a character, they will show it. Every time Velveteen Dream steps into the ring, he is being revered and he's being cheered and he has his name chanted. That's how good of a job that Patrick Clark is doing. And I can't wait to see him grow, man. 24 years old, I say it every fucking time he's in the ring. 24 years old and this guy has an unbelievable ceiling. He has channeled his inner dream and he's playing this character beautifully where people believe in what this guy does. People are attached emotionally to the character. And he's great at what he does. Aleister Black is no slouch in the ring. He hung with Aleister Black in one of the best matches of 2017. We all know what Johnny Wrestling can do. And he hung with Johnny Gargano. So if Everton Dream, you know, though he's in the ring with top-tier talent, he is holding his own right next to both of those guys and guys of that stature. This was a great match. Um, Gargano was on the defensive early on like he usually is because he's such a great storyteller. Um, super kick by Dream here. Right in the face. Gargano rebounded off the rope. He didn't go down, but he rebounded off the second rope with a big lariat on Velveteen Dream. He went for the cover. Two count. Death Valley Driver was countered. Gargano reversed. And Dream hit a reverse... Sister Abigail, it looked like. It looked like a swinging neckbreaker off the middle rope. Johnny Gargano kicks out. Johnny Gargano then sends Dream to the outside, hits a suicide dive, nearly flies into the crowd. Gargano scales the ropes. Dream hops up quick onto the apron and crotches Johnny Gargano on the top turnbuckle. Dream climbs up, looks for a Death Valley driver. Gargano's trying to fight out, but he hits the Death Valley driver off the second rope. Two count, near fall, Morrow's going crazy. He once again said, and I love this line, someone please check the DNA of Johnny Gargano. I don't believe it. Dream, hurt his arm. He's holding his arm. And he goes up for the purple Rainmaker. Normally he goes and hits it with the, I think he hits it with the right arm, but he had to use the left arm on this night. And he was trying to, get some feeling back in his normal elbow dropping arm and he realized that he couldn't do it because it was so hurt so he was on the top turnbuckle just kind of getting motion back in his arm and he he had to switch to the other arm and Johnny seen an opening here dream took too long the hesitation allowed Gargano to get the knees up Johnny hits a super kick on dream knocks him silly he's on his knees dream doesn't go down but he stays on his knees Gargano then locks in the Gargano escape and Dream tapped almost immediately. Fantastic match for Johnny Gargano as he goes on to fight Andrade Cien Almas on Saturday night. After the match, uh, Gargano is celebrating. Zelina Vega and Almas make their way to the ring. We got Cien Almas in the ring showcasing the title and kind of showing Gargano what he won't have on Saturday night. But he turns his back and he tries to get a cheap shot in on Gargano. Gargano blocks and he hits a slingshot DDT, and then he hits, um, I believe he, I, I think we had Almas do somewhat of a beatdown, he beat down Gargano, Gargano fights back, he throws Gargano out to the outside, Gargano comes back in, he hits a slingshot DDT, beautifully executed on Almas, and then Zelina Vega screaming on the outside, everybody's cheering for Gargano to hold up the belt, so he goes down to pick up the belt, he holds the belt in his hands, he holds the belt up, Crowd is chanting, you deserve it. And Zelina Vega is just crying crazy on the outside. And NXT goes off the air, man. Saturday night needs to end that same way. But with Almas tapping out. It needs to. And if I don't see it on Saturday night, I'm going to be very, very disappointed, man. NXT's been great. NXT's been great all month. I am very much looking forward to NXT TakeOver Philadelphia on Saturday night. More so than the Royal Rumble. And the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I'm looking forward to this. More so than the Royal Rumble. One more match that's been announced for TakeOver, and I'm looking forward to it. Velveteen Dream will be in Philadelphia. He is challenging Cassius Ono on Saturday night, man. Looking forward to that. So it's going to be great, man. Dream versus Ono. We got Killian Dane versus Lars Sullivan. Aleister Black versus Adam Cole. AOP versus Undisputed. And Johnny Gargano versus... Andrade Cien Almas for the NXT Championship and Shayna Baszler versus Ember Moon for the NXT Women's Championship. Man, this 
very well could be the best thing all weekend, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing this on Saturday night, man. Thank you guys so much for listening to the NXT review this week. I will see you guys on Off the Script tomorrow. Vince McMahon's making a big announcement in about an hour. It's probably uh, the relaunching of the XFL. What I heard, he's going to be relaunching the XFL in the year 2020. So he's going to make that announcement at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look forward to that. I'll probably talk about that on Off the Script this weekend. So I will see you guys for episode 206 this weekend of Off the Script. And we'll talk about the Royal Rumble, NXT TakeOver, and the firing, the termination of Enzo Amore. I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on Off the Script on Friday night. Talk to you later.